Welcome to Shoreline Conversations. I'm Keith, your host today, and I'm here in our week three of our Organic Disciples podcast. And we're going to be talking about passionate prayer and discipleship with Kevin and Sherry. I'm very excited for this time. I look forward to learning more about prayer with you. Kevin and Sherry, welcome. Thanks, Glad to Keith. be with you today. Good to yeah. be here. Yeah. We'll start with something really simple. How did you learn to pray? Mm -hmm. And did it seem mm. organic or natural to you mm. at the time? Mm. You've been praying longer yeah. than me, so yeah. why don't you jump in? Well, I grew up in a Christian home, and I don't remember a time when we didn't pray. So I grew up in a home where you had dinner every night, and you prayed before the meal. Mm. Um, you, When your parents tucked you into bed at night, um, we actually did the get on your knees, did the whole on your knees prayer. Uh, I didn't know anything different, and I actually loved it already as a child. It it did give me a sense that I was connecting with God already as a child. And so for me, I learned as a young, a very young person and have been praying ever since, so for decades now. <laughs> That's neat. Yeah. How about you, Kevin? Well, for me, I didn't grow up learning to pray. And uh, I'll often say I would only hear the name of Jesus when somebody was angry and it wasn't a flattering use of his name. And so that wasn't that wasn't a part of my life. But when I became a Christian, uh, the people that, that I knew, these younger high school, college age people who were Christians, they talked about God like he was a friend. And just so you, you talk to a friend, you have a conversation with a friend. And so I started a very conversational prayer and uh, actually not just talking to God, but listening Figuring if you have a friend and you talk to them, they're going to talk back to you. And then looking to the word for God to speak and listening for his spirit to speak. And so, uh, and then I learned a lot about prayer uh, when Sherry and I started dating. And because she, had, that was not only something she was raised with, but something she's very passionate about and something she's really exercised and grown a lot in her life. And so I grew through different people, but a lot of my prayer growth has come through Sherry. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like for both of you, it was very natural and mm -hmm. organic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. say, for me, it was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I grew up. Uh, learning memorized prayers. Mm -hmm. um, I I prayed in German and had no idea what the words were that I was saying. Mm -hmm. It was either Old English or German in our prayers, mm -hmm. and it 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 didn't feel natural. Do you remember feel, any other? Any I don't other at all. Oh, okay. You know, I've tried I've tried over the years to try mm -hmm. to remember them. Mm -hmm. um, Hmm. But they were more along the lines of rub a dub dub, thanks for the grub <laughs> type thing. Yeah. Um, they it really had that feel to it to me. It mm -hmm. didn't. It wasn't natural, yeah. and so I'm I'm mm -hmm. excited mm -hmm. to hear the progression mm -hmm. of prayer yeah. in your lives. How, how do you think the world looks at prayer? We get, we get mm -hmm. our perspective here, but what about those outside of mm -hmm. the, the Christian faith? Yeah. I, I think uh, some people kind of look at people like myself and think, well, it looks like it works for you. Mm. Go ahead, do it. I'm glad mm. that mm. it works for you, but it's not for me. Mm. Yeah. I think I think of, it's interesting, one of the things I do when I'm talking with people who I know well or have just met that aren't Christians, uh, if, they'll sh if they share a real joy in their life or if they share, particularly if they share a real pain or burden, I'll often say, I don't know if you believe in the whole prayer thing, but I really... I'd love to say a prayer for you if that'd be okay, that almost everybody says yes. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a broad openness to prayer in in a moment of deep pain or maybe in a moment of deep joy. If somebody says, oh, we just found out we're pregnant or some uh, older person says, I just, I just became a grandma or a grandpa. If I say, well, can't you come in and pray for your grandchild and what's their, what's their name? And almost most people go, really? Oh, thank you so much. And in and, and more conversation or if I know them, you realize they don't believe really in prayer. They don't pray themselves, but they they feel flattered that somebody would engage with them at that level. And so I think there's a, a broad openness to prayer. And I do think a lot of studies will show that a lot of Americans do pray, but I think the prayers are maybe des desperation prayers, which God hears, but they're not a flow of prayer in their normal life. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue to talk about this through the whole series. <clears throat> we're talking about the, um, the whole idea of discipleship mm -hmm. is becoming more like Jesus. Yes. So can't hurt to say what was the example of jesus when it comes to prayer authentic mm. and powerful prayer mm. how, how do you see prayer in his life mm. i just see it through if you read the gospels 
and you really start to track how often did Jesus pray to the Father, mm. it's staggering. I mean, when you really take note, I mean, even when he was feeding the 5,000 mm. and, you know, he's going to break the five loaves and the two fish. If you, if you watch it carefully, you read it carefully, you find out that what he did was he looks up to heaven and he gives thanks. Mm. He, he thanked the Father for the food and for the miracle that was mm. going to happen. I always think that's, you know, praying before you eat even, mm. you know, I mean, giving thanks for the provision that was going to be given to those 5,000 people. But, he, and he prayed, he prayed throughout the whole day. You, you think about um, Mark chapter um, one, when we have sort of the history of Jesus in a whole day where he was healing and and casting out demons. Mm -hmm. And you find out as you read through that passage that he was praying through all those things. Mm -hmm. And then he ends up at the end of the night um, going to bed. He wakes up the next morning. And what is the first thing he does? He goes off to a solitary place and he prays. Mm -hmm. So it's just when you start studying it in the Gospels, you find out mm -hmm. that he is praying all the time. Yeah. I think when I think about Jesus and prayer, one thought that comes to my mind is, if you want to see what's inside of a person, um, look at them in the, in the most painful moments of life. Because when pain comes, we respond and stuff comes out of us. Pretty or ugly, but it comes out of us. And in Jesus, when Jesus hung on the cross, the most painful physical and spiritual moment that anyone's ever experienced in the history of the world, uh, one of the things that came out of him was prayer. You know, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's talking to the Father. It's praying for these people who have who have crucified Him. Right. Um, talking to the Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a it's a it's a cry of pain, but it's a prayer to the Father. And so, mm -hmm. I think if you look at the life of Jesus, he if you prayer was in him because in the painful moments and the challenging moments, prayer came out of him. I even think on that point, when we think about Jesus crying out, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" Often as Christians, we, we think about that passage and, and the power of it, but we don't conceptualize that was a prayer. Right. That was mm -hmm. a prayer. Yeah. He was praying mm -hmm. in his deepest, darkest yeah. moment. Yeah. And so, you know, if he's, mm -hmm. if he's praying to the yeah. Father, uh, we should as well. Yeah. And that just makes me think as we lead into this time of talking about prayer, how would you define prayer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gave a couple examples just now. That was prayer. That was yeah. prayer. What, what is prayer? I think a prayer is just is a conversation of talking with, in, with prayer, it's talking with God, and but also listening for the still small voice of the Spirit, letting God speak to you through the Scriptures. God speaks through people, through but but there's a there's a speaking of God. There's God speaking to you. So I think it's mm -hmm. it's this back and forth relationship. Uh, sometimes we narrowly define it as prayer is asking for stuff I want, mm -hmm. but it's much bigger. It's confessing our sins. It's sharing our joys. Mm -hmm. It's crying out about God's goodness. It's being honest about our pain, but it's that honest conversation mm -hmm. with God. Yeah, I think it's a dialogue. Yeah, I think it's not just one way. Yeah. I think it's communication that 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 does lead to communion and mm -hmm. um, a relationship. You know, I think that um, that's always the picture I have. Yeah. Well, early on, I said, what do you think the world thinks about prayer? And you said, oh, it seems like it's relatively well received. Um, and I've heard a lot of that. I've also heard the opposite. It's a sure. waste of time. Yes. It doesn't make a yeah. difference. And we're yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. What do you see yeah. to those people who say yeah. that prayer is a waste of time because it's not yeah. going to really do anything. It yeah. doesn't make a difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would particularly say that's unfortunate when Christians say that. And I've, sure. heard, and, and I've heard Christians actually say yeah. that their view of God is, is such that, well, God's going to do what God's going to do, and my prayers don't make much of a difference anyways. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to Christians who actually will say it almost that bluntly, like, oh, I don't think my prayers change the heart or the mind of God. And so I, I, I do believe that prayer has power. I do believe that God listens and responds to the prayers of his people, uh, both scripturally, I believe that's true, but also practically, mm -hmm. I've seen that. And so... You know, if if somebody if somebody if a non-believer says I don't believe in prayer, I think it's a waste of time. That doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't even surprise me. Mm -hmm. What surprises me is how many non-believers 
are open to prayer. That's actually shocking. That's I true. I expect That's not. True. I expect couldn't not. Couldn't hurt, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad my my dad said. would always say, "Couldn't yeah? Can I pray for you, Dad?" Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. He was always kind of like, "Well, you know, you could rub Buddha's belly. You can throw up a little prayer. You just try, you know, try some. You know, rub the lucky rabbit's foot and see what happens, right?" Uh, but but so so I don't. I'm not shocked when non-believers act like non-believers. Uh, they don't believe, right. right? I'm not shocked when the non-believers. I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in prayer. Uh, but it breaks my heart when I hear Christians treat prayer like God doesn't really care. God doesn't really listen to them. Uh, it, it's it's probably more of a theological. It's either a theological disposition that they believe that God's going to do what God's going to do, and we can't have any impact on what happens in our world. Or it may be a personal existential pain of saying, I prayed for something very deep for me and God didn't answer. So if God didn't answer as I cried out for this person I loved who was sick or as I cried out for this situation to not happen and it happened, uh, I don't know if I trust God anymore. And then that's a, sort of a pastoral conversation about why do you feel the way you feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think some people really would think that it's not going to make a difference. And then I think okay. on the flip side, I think some Christians even believe, well, God already knows. Right, the mm-hmm. sovereignty of God. Why, why do I need to mm-hmm. tell him if he already knows? What mm-hmm. would you say to those people? Well, I would say that clearly the Bible calls us to prayer, Mm -hmm. that um, whether we understand it fully, Mm -hmm. and I don't understand it fully, that um, we are Bible-believing Christians who are to live out the Word. And it's, you know, you think about it, um, Romans 12, 12, be faithful in prayer. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray continually. Colossians 4, 2, devote yourselves to prayer and just mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And so I may not understand how it all works with the sovereignty mm-hmm. of God, but I, I am called to pray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And if somebody says God already knows, so why communicate that, right? I could, I'll could i put it in a different framework. This is my wife sitting next to mm-hmm. me. Do you know I love you? Yes. I never have to say it again. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. Sweet. That's going to save me a lot of time. Right? No, I, lo- I do yeah. love you. And so we're, oftentimes we're not praying to tell God what God doesn't know. Right. If we're confessing our sins, it's not that God doesn't know we've sinned. It's that God wants to know that our hearts are repentant. Yes. If we praise God, it's not that God doesn't know that we love him, but it's an expression of that love. Mm-hmm. Um, it builds relationship. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's how we build relationship. Yeah. And technically, I could say I should never have to tell Sherry I love her again because she knows, but we're in a relationship and that expression matters. And so I think that we miss the point of prayer. We, you know, we think it, and some people then that all they're saying is, well, I think prayer is just telling God what I want or what I need. Well, that, supplic- that kind of prayer called supplication is important, but that's a fraction of what prayer is all about. It, there's so much more mm-hmm. to it. it sounds yeah. like maybe it's we're making a statement even about how we view God and, mm. and how we believe he sees us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. How would you say that prayer is like a declaration of, of mm. how we see God and how mm. we think he sees us? Mm. Yeah. Well, I think that prayer, um, it, it really reveals if we believe that God is intimate and personal. If somebody never prays, it's, I think it's almost saying, I don't think that God cares about me. I don't think that God sees me as being in a relationship with him. We are a praying life is a life that reveals our theology. Mm-hmm. Do we believe in the presence of God, the care of God, relationship with God? If we don't pray, we're, we're, and maybe there's that we're busy and distracted at certain times, but if we have a life that consistently is not a life of prayer, I think what we're saying is God doesn't really care about being in a relationship with me. And we're probably also saying, I don't care a whole lot about being in a relationship with God, pray, you know, prayer. And, and I, I say that understanding that there are some people who have a natural affinity for prayer that just pray a lot. Sherry's got an intercessory gift. She prays naturally. She'll say to people, I'll pray for you as God brings you to my heart. And that means she's going to probably pray for them a lot because God just keeps reminding her to pray. Mm-hmm. I'll say to people, I'll put you on a list so I remember to pray for you. That's really <laughs> and, true. And that's we, okay. Right? We have our own approaches, yeah. right? Uh, because if I don't, if I don't have that reminder, I'm going on with my next thing. And so we're each. So, See, it's so funny because yeah. that is, that's a good description of the two of us because lists, prayer lists, they do not work for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but, but I pray for a lot of people. Um, and I really, I just, I've mm-hmm. asked, I asked the Lord a long time ago, 
um, I want to I want to be led by you. Sensitize my heart. Remind me. Mm -hmm. And he does. He mm -hmm. just does that. So, mm -hmm. but it is different. It's mm -hmm. different makeup. It's different gifting. Um, it's different experiences. Is that okay? It's or do you okay. do it the right way and he doesn't? No, the wrong that's way? what I mean. That's what I love. She's so much better I, than me. No, I love. I love that we're so different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's times I sort of wish that I was more like Sherry in certain areas like that, but I also know that. God wires us differently. My thing is, do I love God? Do I speak with him in prayer? Is that important to me that I can express it the way God's made me? Mm -hmm. I don't need to do it like Sherry does. But there's times where I sort of wish that my heart was responsive that way. And it's been a lot of years. I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to happen. So. <laughs> well, I just got this interesting picture um, because uh, I talked about how when I learned to pray, mm -hmm. it was like memorized prayers. Right. And that just didn't do anything right. for me. Uh, I actually do know people who recite memorized prayers or read a prayer out of a book yeah. and it does connect mm -hmm. them with God. Like yes, for them it does absolutely. work. And I just had this picture of some people can write a letter, a love card, a happy birthday note and others need to take what they can find from Hallmark, you yes. know, and, and yeah, exactly. that person can articulate it better than I can, yeah. but I can own those words oh, as my absolutely. own. You know? yeah. So and, there's and, a lot of different ways we can pray, right? Well, yeah. and actually, I think the Lord has done that for us in the book of Psalms. Mm. Yeah, There's 150 prayers for us. Right. We don't have to write our own. Mm -hmm. uh, that I, For me, it's such a beautiful prayer book. Yeah. I've used it uh, for lots of different experiences in my life at my lowest. If I'm mm -hmm. at my lowest moment and I can't come up with words um, mm -hmm. because I'm that low, yeah. I go to the Psalms mm -hmm. and I let the Psalms pray for me. Mm. That's neat. Yeah. yeah. Psalms are hard for me, yeah. you know, but they're different for yes. different yeah, people. Yeah. My yeah. wife just loves to, to yeah. pray through the Psalms. Mm -hmm. When when's the right time mm. to pray before meals? I, I got that part right, but when really is the yeah, right really, time? Yeah, really, anytime, yeah. all the time. As long as your eyes pray. are closed. Yeah, right. <laughs> so do your eyes have to be closed when you pray? No. <laughs> Sherry wrote a book called "Praying with Eyes Wide Open." Yeah, for people who don't um, know. <laughs> but but the beauty the beauty of that kind of prayer is you recognize that you can pray at any time, mm. any place, anywhere, mm -hmm. and with all kinds of different prayers. Mm -hmm. And it's it's. And, yeah. and actually, I was excited. You know, I wrote that book about six years ago, but mm -hmm. it was so revealing to go through the Old Testament and the New Testament and not, I mean, we all kind of know that it doesn't, there's no place in the Bible that says you, you know, have to close your eyes, but I couldn't find one reference or one actual experience in the Bible where it said that, you know, their eyes were closed. Mm -hmm when they were praying but i found multiple experiences of people even jesus mm -hmm. the high priestly prayer mm -hmm. um you know it starts off with he looked up to heaven and then he says the whole prayer with his eyes open mm -hmm. and so i do think that uh, that idea of praying anytime eyes open eyes closed is an important uh, note to consider as we think about praying, mm -hmm. that we really can do it all the time. Mm -hmm. I do think though that as we, we think about praying continually, that we have to have times in our life though, like Jesus, where we set apart. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think about when it was time for him to start his ministry. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He went up to the mountainside, right? Mm -hmm. For a whole right. night right. to pray because mm -hmm you know the beginning of the church mm -hmm. yeah. was it was going to be happening yeah and it was that important that's not a casual prayer time right, right? that's not along the way prayer that's this is serious mm -hmm. and i we've got to go and so i think that even as we talk about praying anytime and all the time that there should be times that we set apart i mean and i try to do that because i try to pray throughout my day but i try to have time at least once a day where I kind of set apart from everything. I'm quiet, whether it's just mm -hmm. listening um, or, you know, really thinking through the people I should be praying for. But um, and so I think Jesus teaches us um, how to do that, have those times that we set apart to pray for those really mm -hmm. big moments. Yeah, I just got this picture of my relationship with my wife. You talked earlier about mm -hmm. your relationship. And if I, you know, we have to communicate with one another. 
I have with my wife regularly throughout our day lots of interactions. Yeah, texts right? and texts yeah. or you know quick Recall. little visits or getting dinner ready or those kinds of things. But if that was all of the communication that we ever have, we, yeah. we'd be missing out on it, right? Yeah. There has to be time set apart, free from the kids, you know, and from yeah. the distractions of life where we can just be together. Yeah. And I see that God mm -hmm. wants that yes, same thing absolutely. with us. Absolutely. Exactly. Dedicated mm -hmm. to Him. Are there wrong ways to pray? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus seemed to think so. Mm -hmm. um, he talked to the religious leaders, the, to the scribes and the Pharisees, and He said, you know, you're, you pray on the street corners with the express intention of impressing people. Mm. And Jesus, Jesus basically says, and you do impress people, and there's your reward. Mm. Uh, but you're not, you're not talking to me. So I, th I think the, the primary wrong thing about prayer, the wrong way to pray, is when we're praying uh, for ourselves or for other people because we're not really talking to God. Mm -hmm. So it really isn't prayer, but it appears to be prayer. I think that's the problem. And it's, yeah. it's when the heart is wrong. I I don't think if you're sincerely seeking to pray that you can do it wrong as you come before the Lord. Yeah. If if your heart is sincere, I don't think you have to fear that you're going to do it wrong. Yeah. You know, it's like a child coming mm -hmm. and you know hugging yeah. and you mm -hmm. know a parent. They're not going to do that wrong. You know, right. um, you know they might catch them at a wrong time mm -hmm. or squeeze them too tight or something. But it's not you know it's not mm -hmm. wrong. The heart is right. That's yeah. that's what I think. Yeah. I get distracted sometimes in group prayer because I thinking through. Oh, I'm not supposed to be praying for everybody to hear, and it, it gets yeah. it's, sure. it's hard. And I, and I have to actually pray sometimes before my public prayer, telling mm. God, "You know my heart, search right. my heart, and yes. make sure I'm in the right place." Absolutely, in this, and that I'm not saying this prayer for the benefit of the people around me. So that's kind of a weird quirk in me, mm. you know. But but I think then I get my heart in the right place yeah. as I present. Uh, and then God honors that. I mean, because I'm, a, so. yeah, He does. I've, you know. Can we lift up prayers that are too big or mm. too bold? I don't think so, because um, it's, it has to match God's power. His yeah. power is unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think they. I think we can be um, out of line. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but I. I don't. Yeah. I think that. Um, the limit is God's power, yeah. and that's unlimited. Yeah, I was thinking we can we can we can lift up prayers that are too selfish, um, and we can say, "Well, God didn't answer this prayer," but it wasn't that God couldn't. I think it was that God said, "No, that's not good for you. That's not." It's it's, it's like a parent, you know. You, there there's things, Keith, that your kids have asked of you that you could afford to provide for them, but you said no. Why? Because you love them. Right. Because you recognize that this would not be healthy or good for you, I think. So, so, so God, it's not the limitation of prayer is not God's power. It might be God's wisdom, where God says, "I'm going to choose to not give that to you because it would blow you up." Mm -hmm. uh, so, some of the best prayers, uh, some of the best prayers, I think, through my life that I look back on and I'm thankful for are prayers that I prayed and God didn't answer. At the time, I wanted God to answer. I wanted God to answer just like I wanted, and God said no. And I look back years later and I go, "Oh Lord, thank you." For that experience of crying out to you, asking you sincerely for my heart at the time, and you told me no. And at the time I was upset and bothered, I look back and go, oh, that would have been so bad for me. And I recognize God's goodness. And so I think God chooses not to answer our prayers, but it's not a lack of power. When I think, I, I always have to be reminded, um, I think the Lord's Prayer really instructs us mm -hmm. um, to make sure that my focus is on His kingdom. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what we're taught to pray, for His kingdom to come and um, that's when I like to start to think about big prayers. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, uh, you know, if it's within the kingdom, yeah. how, bi how big, how big, how big could the prayer be? Pretty much anything. Yeah, it that's like. what I think. So that that excites me, and I try to think of it in that realm instead of maybe in a selfish realm. Yeah. Um, um, you know, Sherry's read Sherry's read a lot more books on prayer than I have. She she has lots of books on prayer, and there's one there's one I've heard you quote before. It's, it's like all that God has and all that God. That is yeah, all that God can do is like at the disposal, disposal of God. Of who, do you remember who that? That's um, R.A. Torrey. R.A. Torrey, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, so you know, all, all that, that God, God has, has and yeah. all that God is is at, at the disposal of prayer. prayer. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And our prayers unleash things that wouldn't be unleashed otherwise. Not that mm -hmm. God couldn't, but God chooses to respond to our prayers, yeah. And that's a pretty powerful statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like big. our prayers make a difference. Mm-hmm. There's some people that don't believe that. Mm -hmm. 
and you can actually see it in how much they pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I think there's some subtlety or nuance to the whole thing because I know our prayers make a difference, mm -hmm. but I think I can get caught up in, in the moment or in this mm -hmm. thing like, is God really going to do it right here? And I'm just not so sure yeah. I'm going to sway him or change yes. his mind or I, I, know, I know nothing's too big, but it just seems like in certain situations and maybe yeah. it has something to do with how close I am feeling to God at that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's it seems like everything is permissible and yeah. everything is acceptable, mm -hmm. um, but I have a hard time at certain moments. Are there yeah. though any dangers yeah. you see or ruts maybe in prayer? Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, it sounds like we're saying, mm -hmm. you know, anything goes in prayer mm -hmm. um, other than standing on a street corner and performing mm -hmm. a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, but do you think there's some dangers or? I think uh, even yeah. just my comment about the Lord's prayer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when it becomes, you know, just recite like it. Wrote, just yep. Yeah, it over yeah that, that's yeah. dangerous, yeah. you know, because you're taking something that is supposed to mm -hmm. um, kind of be a springboard and mm -hmm. be um, guidelines for um, how to pray. Yeah. And um, yeah, we've taken the power away from mm -hmm. what God wanted to teach us through it. I, yeah. I think that's that's one danger. Yeah. yeah. Reciting prayers. Yeah, and I think another another real danger in prayer can be where we feel like, and I've, I've seen this in some streams of Christianity, and I don't think the hearts are wrong, but I think the practice is dangerous. And that is that if I pray the right way with the right words, that God has to do what I say. Mm. Um, and there, people come up with clever little terms to describe it, but it, it's, you know, it's sort of like where if I, if I, if I, and especially it'll be around things like uh, monetary wealth, physical healing, um, and I've had people say, well, no, if you pray the right way, with the right amount of faith, you pray the right way, God has to answer your prayer. Mm -hmm. I'm really hard, I'm, I'm really, I'm really uh, reluctant to believe that God has to do anything. anything. And right. they'll say, well, it has to do with his character, and he's promised he would. But I don't think the Bible promises that every time we pray the right way, we'll always get what we want mm -hmm. financially, or we'll always be healed. And so I've had that debate with people who I love, who I respect, and they love Jesus, but we have to just agree to disagree on that thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's a danger to saying, I, in a sense, I almost shake my fist and I say, God, this is what you must do, or I pray with this authority and I'm going to declare it. Um, I think there's a humility in prayer. Yes, a boldness in the power of God, but a humility that I don't always know what's right. Mm -hmm. So I am very cautious to not um, shake my fist at God and tell him what he must do and be upset that he didn't do it the way I said. Uh, but to say, God, you are wise, you are God. I would long to see this happen. I would long to have this provision for me or someone else. I would long to see this healing happen. I believe in the name of Jesus it can happen. And I pray in the power of Jesus asking for that healing or asking for that provision, but I will humbly God accept whatever it is you choose to give. And I think that that's a better posture. So you mentioned, mm. Sherry, the, the Lord's Prayer, and mm. as that, that's an example of how we, we are to pray. Mm -hmm. Can you spend a few moments just talking through the different parts of what that is? Because what I'm seeing maybe is that one of the dangers is having just kind of like one level i'm just asking and asking and mm. asking for god to give me <laughs> what i want um, when the example right is a little bit yeah. different our in, father in who art in heaven and, you know first off our father mm -hmm. that um we are in community we're going to be talking about consistent community in a few coming you know weeks um, yeah, yeah with yeah. the sermon series but mm -hmm. um just right away that that um we're not alone and mm -hmm. Um, our prayers shouldn't just be for us singly, but our, you know, our Father, um, who art in heaven, and just that, hallowed be Thy name. You know, like He's holy, mm. and the first place that we start is His holiness, um, and how how um, how He is to be worshipped. He is above all things. Um, he's worthy of the one that we pray to. You know, mm -hmm. he, He's 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 worthy of our prayers. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, and then thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Mm. And for me, that um, really frames a lot of how I seek to pray. Mm. You know, I, you know, I've become a lot bolder. I pray a lot more. I think about um, um, James four too. It says, um, "You do not have because you have not mm. asked." Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of I have a real simple prayer sometimes. Um, like, you know, my brother, you know, my brother um, died of cancer and mm -hmm. had, had a pretty brutal battle. 
And um, I was real close with him at the end and actually in intensive care with him for five straight days with his wife and his two daughters. And um, there's a lot of crying out to God during those yeah. moments, right? Um, but I have found that even in those moments, I say, God, um, you know, please, you know, heal my brother, or help my brother. But God, just know my heart. Um, um, I'm, I'm a child that is coming, not demanding. Because mm. you're a good father and you have all things mm -hmm. and I will trust you. But Lord, know that this child is coming and just saying, Lord, please, would you heal my brother? Mm. Would, you, would you give him relief? And I have found that somehow that posture has been so helpful for, for me because it expresses my heart, but it keeps in line with the fact that I am not in charge, but, it, but it's sincere. And um, I find that that has been a good way to get through some pretty tough times mm -hmm. and uh, to submit. And then I watch even during those days, um, praying for my brother during that time and watching how God, even though his life did end, answered a lot of prayers hmm. by giving him grace till his very last breath, yeah. you know? And so I watched God answer prayers. I watched God move. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know if you want to add and continue yeah. in that, but I mean, as you go on in the prayer, yeah, you know, well, daily and bread and... It was, you were talking about, um, I think the passage where you said... Um, James. James, you... you four two. You asked, James four two. But you know, yeah. He says, you know, you, you don't ask, yeah. but then he goes on to say... And sometimes you ask and do not receive, right? Because it's because you're asked to spend it on your self. own selfish passions, kind right. of thing. And so th there's a whole teaching there on prayer. And so I say also that goes back to what we talked about before that there's times where we're asking for the wrong things or in the wrong spirit in the wrong way, and God lovingly says, "No, that's not a weakness of God. That's a, the wisdom of God." Yeah. But I, I guess what I was pointing out too is just that when I have found in my own life, and I've had lots of years of of walking with him through hard times, is that when he says no to the one thing, mm -hmm. he meets me in another way. Mm -hmm. And I actually mm -hmm. have my prayer answered in him, mm -hmm. in his presence, yeah. Yeah. in his power. It just looks differently than what mm -hmm. I originally asked for. Now that sounds amazing. Um, and I know that I often have a hard time seeing God <laughs> answering prayer that way is that something that's just naturally always been there for you or, oh no are there some extra is there how did you go about being able to recognize god answering prayers in different in different ways like if, probably praying a lot okay. more yeah. you okay. just, just have to do it a lot it. Okay. you've mm -hmm. got to do it you've got to choose to do it mm -hmm. uh you got that you just you start praying more and the more you pray i, I have found that the, you know i love um Dallas Willard, I, I like this line. He says that communication with God brings communion with God, hmm. which leads to union with God. Hmm. Like you become one mind. Hmm. I like that. I love that. Yeah, I think it's really powerful. Hmm. Yeah. And so I just think that the, you know, the more you pray, uh, the more you open yourself up. I have a line, you know, we have a whole story about it, but something happens every time you pray. I actually believe that. Mm -hmm. And this something that happens, I'm not always sure what it is, yeah. but something's happening. Mm -hmm. And maybe just my heart is being changed, but um, I, I believe that at the core of my being and that actually causes me to pray more. And, mm -hmm. um, and so then I keep praying more and then I experience more fruit and then that makes me want to pray more and it, it, yeah. it grows. Well, as we talk about fruit and again, we keep and this whole idea is organic disciples, and it's right. discipleship and evangelism right. going together. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, I think, the, the greatest things that we can pray for is for those who are far mm. from Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For some of us, it's a hard thing to do. How can we pray more mm. passionately and faithfully, other than just just do it? Or maybe that's your answer, just do it. Mm -hmm. How can we That probably we would be my answer, <laughs> just do it, yeah. just do it. Yeah. I mean, I actually, you know, I was really challenged by Lee Strobel you know, years ago when he came and he gave us the one, 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 um, where you, you know, at, what is it? One, uh, one, one o'clock, one minute, one person. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually changed it because I did it at nine o'clock, so I call it my nine one one. But I have to tell you, and that person for me was Kevin's dad. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if I didn't have that kind of little tool, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have prayed every day. 
Mm. I just I just wouldn't have. That's I, a great tool, though. It is. So there are tools. Yes, mm. and so like I had an alarm on my smartphone at nine o'clock, and mm. we and it you know it it yeah. did every night for years. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I just pray. But if I wasn't doing that, I would not have prayed as much. But I found mm -hmm. out that even those those tools actually remind me and get my heart back. Right? Where I'm you know I'm I'm sinful by nature. You know, my nature goes away from God. I need help to make sure that it stays with God and his purposes, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about praying for lost people. Um, that's, a, that's a good prayer. Yeah. yeah. I think we can also pray for people far from Jesus. There's some, like, just like little practical ways to pray. We can pray God soften their heart. We can pray God open doors for spiritual conversations. We can pray, as we pray for them, we pray for ourselves. Lord, give me boldness to notice those opportunities to tell my story or to tell your story or to serve them in the name of Jesus. Um, it's not just it's just the prayer, Lord, may they know you, but Lord, may we be on a, may be on a journey with them as they're walking toward you and it's making ourselves available. It's I, I've, I've often prayed for people who I just have been reaching out to and can't seem to connect with. Lord, bring someone along in their life mm -hmm. who they love and respect, who really loves you. So there's lots of those, those simple prayers to pray Mm -hmm. That are asking God to move in their life, and at the end of the day, it's it's God in your grace by your Spirit draw them to yourself. Yeah. You know, I I I love. Um, there's a verse in First Peter four seven, and it, it it actually says that the end of all things is near. Be alert and of sober mind, so you can pray. Mm -hmm. It's talking about you know the the end of time and how this is serious. We're mm -hmm. talking about people's eternal destiny, you know, whether mm -hmm. they're going to be with God forever or not, but that we're actually supposed to be alert and sober of mind. Mm -hmm. Why? So we can pray. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful mm -hmm. to me. That's Absolutely. it. So, so you can pray. Why? Because it's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's scripture. First mm -hmm. Peter 4, 7. Yeah, that's great. So as we grow in praying more passionately for those who are far from Jesus, mm -hmm. do you think that we can send a message of mm -hmm. some sort to them yeah. if they know that we're consistently mm. and faithfully mm -hmm. and passionately praying for them. Yeah. Well, I think our prayers, number one, we've already talked about, have effect and impact that they might not recognize. Right, right, right. But if they know we're praying for them, I think it shows, it, if they know what we believe and are praying for them, it says to them, I love you. Mm. If nothing else, they say, well, they love me. That, that's their thing, but they love me. They care about me. But it also says we believe in the power of prayer. I remember a couple uh, who owned a little Chinese restaurant near our home in Michigan for years. And I'd go over every year before Christmas, and I'd bring them an invitation to church service. And they were friends. We did things together. But um, we went and saw the Passion of the Christ together. It was one of the first times they kind of experienced the story of Jesus in a pretty significant, severe way. Huh? Yeah. But um <laughs> But they, uh, every Christmas I would bring uh, an invitation to come to Christmas services. And then one day, uh, our worship leader from our church had gone over to their place, for, uh, to their restaurant for lunch, came back and she said, oh, they feel really, really bad. And I said, why? They said, they said you haven't invited them to Christmas services. Now, they had never come. All right, but they felt really bad, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, there are invitations in my car." So I zipped over there and I brought it to them, and, and they and I could tell they they thought I didn't love them anymore. Oh. Now they weren't. I said, I, so I actually said, "So do you think you'll come this year?" They said, "Oh no," <laughs> and they're like, "We're not going to come," but but we want to know you love us, right? If you said to a person you care about, "Yeah, I'm not going to pray for you anymore," that, that would be deeply hurt. If they, they you you pray because you love, you pray because you believe. But I think in that living it out and showing our love through that and showing our care, we're also showing them that we actually do believe in the power mm. of prayer, which means that we believe in God and we're not just doing religion. And they need to know that this is real to us. Mm. There's a witness in that. I actually have an experience with a neighbor uh, who, it was one of my neighbors that I was really praying for to be able to, at some point, you know, share the story of Jesus with and sort of, uh, you know, just living life with them and building a relationship. Well, something happened and I ended up, uh, their son was, went through a hard time. And so I just committed to pray for him every day for a month. And I didn't plan on telling her, but there was a situation that came up where I just kind of casually said, yeah, well, I've actually been praying for him every day this uh, past month. And it shocked her. She said, you have? And I said, yeah. And, and she said, well, really? I said, yeah, I care about him. I, I really mm -hmm. care and, and love him. And it was actually that conversation mm -hmm. 
that opened the door for me to share the gospel with her. It and and yeah, it was it, it was unbelievable to me because yeah. I'd been praying and praying, but that was the key that unlocked the opportunity to actually share the story of Jesus with her. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. Yeah. yeah. And I think for a lot of us, it's hard to pray for people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard for us to tell them we're praying for them. And mm -hmm. then I think we can take this big leap to actually going to pray with them. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. I know for a lot of Christians, that's a hard one to do. Yeah. But you believe that that's really a good thing yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about that just a little bit. Yeah. What, why is it such a good thing to do it? pray with yeah. non-Christians. Well, some Christians have our time even praying with Christians. Absolutely. Uh, out loud. As, and, and so mm -hmm. I, so that... And I used to. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, told you that I, was one of me. Yeah, no, I mean, mm -hmm. I was terrified to pray out loud. Yeah. Um, yeah, just hearing my voice. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I became an RA uh, my uh, sophomore year at a Christian college and then found out that I was going to have to pray in front of... I, I was t terrified. I, I mm -hmm. kid you not. Uh, my roommate... She was really sweet, and I shared with her, I don't think I can do this. Mm -hmm. And she said, we'll just pray every morning. I'm going to teach you how to pray out loud. So she yes. did. Mm -hmm. You talk about taking my hand. Yeah. Yeah. And so every morning, and I did it with great trepidation. I mean, mm -hmm. just to hear my, I don't know why. I, I prayed, but not in front of, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. groups of people. Yeah. And uh, But she journeyed along with me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gave me the experience of praying. Mm -hmm. Um, with other people. Yeah, yeah. But even I had I had a hard time doing that. Yeah. I don't anymore. But yeah. But and if you're at a point, so if you're at a point where you can pray with other believers, that's the whole next step. Say, well, why would I pray with a non-believer? They wouldn't even want to pray. Right. But there's something the, the beautiful thing about it, and and both Sherry and I have done this lots and lots of times through the years, is uh, when you pray, you know, in a sense, God shows up, and they. People will feel something, experience something. I've had many, many people through the years, that as I prayed for them, just tears begin to flow. And they'll say, I don't know why I'm crying. And I, I do know why, because the Spirit of God has come near and, and is mm -hmm. touching them at that moment. And uh, they can't put words to it, but I know what's going on. And so I think there's something very beautiful and powerful about not just saying to somebody, oh, I'll pray for you about that, but saying, would it be okay if I just took a moment right now and said a prayer for you? And the thing is, if you do that, don't turn it into a sermon. Don't turn it into a mm -hmm. gospel presentation. Mm -hmm. Just pray for what the need is. Pray for what the joy is. Pray for the, what the sorrow is. Um, and see what God does with that. But I think it's very And powerful. I often, during those time just let, times, let people know, too, we don't have to shut our eyes. God will hear us. And sometimes yeah. that makes people feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. now that we... I probably should have asked this earlier, even when I mentioned that I've had a hard time praying out loud with people. Um, so for a lot of our listeners, that's where they are right mm -hmm. now. Um, are there any practical steps that you would suggest to, you have a little bit of your story shared, mm -hmm. what yeah. you did, but mm -hmm. how they can maybe mm -hmm. get to that place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. If we're saying go pray with non-Christians yeah. and they're saying, I, yeah. I can't even pray. pray with my it's wife or yeah. my husband yeah. or my best <laughs> yeah. friend. Yeah. Good. Uh, how, how do you get there? I think there's just like some little practical things. So one would be get used to hearing, you know, Sherry said it seems yep. weird hearing my voice. Get used to hearing your voice praying. So if you're in the car driving by yourself, turn off the TV. I mean, turn off the TV. Turn off the TV. <laughs> definitely, oh, definitely, turn, down, right? definitely, <laughs> definitely turn off the TV. Um, whatever you're watching while you're driving, turn off your phone or, or, or put it on mute and just pray out loud. Get used, get used to praying out loud and hearing yourself pray. Mm -hmm. Because we, we've d done some marriage um, marriage retreats and different things, and we'll actually teach couples how to pray as a couple. We know a lot of you couples have never prayed together, so we're going to have you turn your chairs facing each other, and you're going to go toes to toes, knees to knees, hands to hands, heart to heart, and lock hands. Look, and then and it's and we said and you're going to and we said husbands, you're going to go first, and you're and we and we said we, we've locked the doors. You can't sneak out right now. You can't go to the bathroom right now. We're going to do this thing. And said so you came that you came to this retreat. You asked us to lead it, so we're you know and. We'll have we'll have people come to us afterwards, wives particularly, and say, "That's the first time I've ever prayed with my husband mm. out loud together." I know he loves Jesus. I know he believes in prayer. I know he prays, but it's the first time we've prayed as a couple, uh, and, and that's because somebody said, "Give it a try." Mm. And so, start by praying out loud when you're alone. Then find a very trusted Christian mm -hmm. and say, hey, can we pray together sometimes? I'm trying to learn to go deeper. You know, I'm growing in passionate prayer. I'm trying, you know, will you take my hand and help me grow? Can we pray together like, like your friend did? Was it Maria, right? No, Connie. Uh, or Con Connie. Like, Con like Connie did for you. Um, and then when that becomes comfortable, and it does with time, 
It's, it's like anything in life. The first time you do something, it seems weird and awkward and it becomes more natural. And then say, God, maybe take me to that next step where I'm out for a meal and we're, you know, the, the, and I say to the server, hey, you know, I'll often, I'll often, not all the time, but sometimes I'll say, hey, when our food comes, we're going to say a prayer. Do you have anything we could pray for you for? And, and they'll share a prayer. And then, then you're kind of praying for them. But then oftentimes, some, sometimes people will stay there and linger with you or with, with a person who shares a deep, deep pain and struggle to say, you know, hey, I don't, no, you know, if you do the whole prayer thing, but I really believe in prayer. Would it be okay if I just said a, just a short prayer asking God to help you through that? And the the worst someone's going to pro- probably say is, "Oh, no, that's not my thing. I'm not into that religion thing." But that's very, very rare. Most people are going to say, "Really? Thank you." Mm-hmm. And then just lift up a simple, "No these and thous, no German, uh, no, uh, no, you know, unless just unless you unless you sind Sie Deutsch, unless you're German, and if you are, then that's absolutely fine. No English, but uh, <laughs> but just pray in your own language, in your own way, and and." pray in Jesus' name and see what God does with it. And I also think to speak some truth to yourself, to remind yourself that this is not a show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're just talking to God. You don't have to do it perfectly. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to do it perfectly. Give your, you know, give your, give yourself a little bit of truth yeah. that yeah. this is prayer. This is not a presentation yeah. or speech. Right. Um, remember who you're talking to yeah. and with, and yeah. that is what's important. It's who you're talking yeah to not yeah. what you say and you say it just right. Yeah. Yeah, I think a good part of prayer is actually about us and what it does mm-hmm. for us. And prayer can prayer can change us, right? Personally, mm-hmm. even those of us oh, yeah. who um, submit to practicing prayer and mm-hmm. growing in it and expanding. How, how can prayer in your mind change our hearts and mm-hmm. change our lives? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think as we pray, you know, we pray for others, but I think we can pray for ourselves and mm-hmm. we can pray um, you know, pray, prayer can change our hearts and lives in that if we're praying that God will work in us. I mean, there's certain prayers that you know God always wants to answer. If, you, if you're praying, God, make me more like your son, Jesus. If you're praying according to God's will, that's according to God's will. Mm-hmm. Um, dare to pray that. Pray, pray it in faith. Pray it with confidence. Um, if we're praying, Lord, you know, let me grow more, more humble. Let me, Lord, bring, bring alive the fruit of your spirit in my life. God wants to answer those prayers. And, and praying in Jesus' name is not just putting Jesus' name at the end of your prayer. It's actually praying consistently with the character and the desire of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So if you're praying, make me more like Jesus. If you're praying, if you're a husband, you're saying, God, I pray you'll help me love my wife and humbly serve her like Jesus served the church. You're praying scripture at that point. God wants to answer. So, so praying for yourself will change you because God's going to unleash power in your own life. Uh, but I, I think prayer also changes us because it deepens our faith. Uh, the more we pray, the more we see answered prayer, the more we are going to want to pray and believe in faith we're going to see answered prayer. And it, and it builds on itself. We, you build a mm-hmm. legacy, a history, almost a spiritual muscle memory of praying and seeing God respond, growing your faith, and you pray more, and it mm-hmm. becomes this, this heart-transforming experience. And sometimes I think that um, <clears throat> we experience more of God's power in our own lives for change as we ask for it. Mm-hmm. because then he gains the glory. Because if we're seeking to live our lives in our own strength and we're not praying for it mm-hmm. and change happens, then we get the glory. Mm-hmm. And our mm-hmm. lives are supposed to be to glorify God. So mm-hmm. I actually think that sometimes we're withheld sometimes movement and change in our life because we're, we're not going to him and asking for mm-hmm. his help. Mm-hmm. So when we ask for his help, he gives it because then the glory goes to him. For some, I think they've maybe tried prayer mm. and said, you know what? Didn't yeah. work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the didn't work can mean lots of different things. The mm-hmm. prayer wasn't answered. I didn't feel like I connected right. with God. Yeah. What do you say to that yeah. person who's yeah. saying, I, I've tried. It's mm. just, it's not, mm. yeah. not for me or it didn't work. Yeah. I've had people say things like, I, I'm praying and I feel like my prayers are like bouncing off the ceiling and coming. Oh, there's, mm-hmm. there's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so there's, I mean, so there'd be lots of responses to that depending right. on what the person's what experiencing. Right, right. right. Sure. If, if someone's praying and not feeling like anything's happening because they're living in ongoing, consistent rebellion and sin, then my response is, you know, it might be aligning your life more with God's will is the, is the response mm-hmm. because um, God's probably not going to be answering 
prayers when you're running away from him and rebelling against him in every possible chance you get. Yeah. Um, that's you know, if somebody comes and says, "I've been asking God for certain things and He's just not answering," I might say, "Well, what are the kind of things you're asking for?" Well, I want a new this, a new that, a new other thing, and I three more of those. And you say, "Well, okay, now you're looking at God as kind of the heavenly slot machine that always is supposed to pay off when you pull the handle." It's like, no, that's not how God works either. So, so part of it's going to be, but 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 if somebody says, "I love Jesus." I'm praying. I don't feel like he's hearing me. I'm not seeing response to the prayer and, and they're and they're they're healthy prayers. Then, you know, then it may just be a matter of saying, you know, continue to pray, continue to seek his face, continue to build that relationship. Um, it's like it's like the idea of eating healthy food over time. It's like exercising. Oh, I worked out and nothing happened. Right. Well, how long have you been working out? I've done it three times. It's like now you need thirty. You know, you no you no you need three hundred. You're you know you're a runner. It's like well. You know, you're out of shape, and you go out and do a run, and you go, "This did not work for me." You go, "Well, yeah, because it's it's how long, how how long is it going to take somebody out of shape? How many how many runs? How many times out before they they go, it's working for me?" Well, and it's it's yeah. ac- here's an interesting piece on that. It's actually a combination, yeah. right? It's not you can't say 50 runs yeah. if you ran once a week for mm-hmm. the whole year. Yeah. It wouldn't <laughs> do you any good, it, right? Mm-hmm. It's consistency. It's, it's it's a few times a week okay. mm-hmm. in increasing measure yeah. consistently over yeah. months. Yeah. And so that, that same 50 yeah. could be a good number, um, but it's how it's Maybe done, two right? Mm-hmm. To Correct. 50, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, and we live in a, we live in a culture right now where people want instant results. Don't you know, yeah. we, we train people in evangelism all over the world and we'll tell them you've got to consistently lead this into your church for six, eight, nine months before you see almost anything happen. Right. It's like, no, we want to buy a box of curriculum and and open it up, have a meeting, and two weeks later, we want to see our church change. It's like, guess what? It doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. And so even with prayer, I think it's living it, seeking the Lord, mm-hmm. praying, being faithful in that over time, mm-hmm. and that, that we want the fruit, maybe not today, but maybe yesterday, now, you know? Mm-hmm. And God says, listen, you're in it for the long game here. Let's just live your life out of faith. Stay and and that kind of immediate need is, it, it's it's problematic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, we were on a road trip. We drove down to Southern California a couple of weeks ago and we went to go um, get lunch and we stopped at one uh, restaurant and we're like, oh, that line is way too long. Mm-hmm. And so then we went to another one and the line looked a lot better. We ended up waiting for our burgers and fries for 45 minutes oh. and uh, and so anyway, I asked the students on Sunday, what, what would you think of waiting for 45 minutes for your burgers and fries? And they're like, oh, I wouldn't. That's just way too long, you know, 45 minutes. I'm like, well, like in Jesus' time, they had to like get in a boat and go out into the sea and they had to throw their nets in there and catch the fish. And like, it took a whole lot longer. Yeah, like half, half the right, day for a lunch, We've right? gotten to this place though where mm. we need it now. And mm. like, if there's not a microwave, mm-hmm. like if we had to even just use a regular oven, mm-hmm. uh, that's way too long, yeah. you know? Yeah. We yeah. want results now. Yeah. yeah. You were gonna well, I was just gonna, I was just more. thinking, I think there's been times and uh, there's been a few seasons in my life where maybe what was going on in my life was so difficult that it was even sometimes at your deepest it's moments it's hard to pray and the Bible speaks to that, mm-hmm. that you can be quiet. Just let the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the the mm-hmm. groans, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe just sitting there, mm-hmm. um yeah. not trying to say any yeah. words. <laughs> And sometimes, sometimes it's the silence. Sometimes it's the Bible also gives you permission to lament your heartache. You know, to, there's there's Psalms of lament where you're saying, "Lord, you feel so far from me. I cry out to you. Where are you?" There's Psalms that are that, are that kind of prayer. Why would God put that in the Bible to show us that it's okay to come to God and say, "God, I'm crying to you. I'm crying to you. I'm calling out to you, and you seem far away. I feel like my prayers are bouncing off the ceiling." Yeah. But instead of where are you? complaining you're, 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 to other people, you're coming to God saying, "God, I'm crying out. Where are you?" And that's honest. that's a kind of prayer. Yeah, painfully yeah. honest prayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a, little, a portion of our audience actually does well with prayer. Yeah. That they <laughs> they do pray. They love to pray. But as with every um, spiritual marker that we talk mm-hmm. about, they want to grow yes. more and grow deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say to, to that listener? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I would give a simple uh, encouragement to start with the prayers of the Bible. Go to John 17, the prayer of Jesus. Yes. Go to go to Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount where the, the Lord's Prayer. Go to the book of Psalms 
and and not don't necessarily read those prayers as your prayer, but let those prayers teach you to pray. And go deeper in prayer as you learn from Holy Spirit inspired prayers that have been prayed by God's people for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we're like, well, I'm trying to grow in prayer. I'm trying to come up with some new fresh thing to pray. Well, maybe what's best is not a new fresh thing. Maybe it's an old spirit inspired thing and that you begin to pray out of this psalm. You begin to pray like like this person prayed in a time of desperation in the Bible. So, and again, you can you can go online, you can go great prayers from the Bible, type that in, and you're gonna get a list of prayers. And you start looking, I never thought about this as a prayer. And what does that teach me about how I can pray? So I'd, I'd say become a student of prayer from the Bible. Yeah, and, and actually kind of to tag onto that, to actually go through the gospels mm -hmm. and uh, you know just kind of note every time Jesus prayed yeah. and kind of just kind of grow your understanding of how mm -hmm. Jesus prayed mm -hmm. um, as you think about how it can build into how you can pray. Yeah. Well, as we just spent this time talking about prayer and the role it can mm -hmm. have, I just find it appropriate for us to end this mm -hmm. podcast yes. with, with prayer. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you yeah. like to uh, close this prayer? Yeah. Maybe both of you. Yeah. 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 How about if, uh, I tee it off and you put it in. That'll be great. Okay, <laughs> a little golf metaphor for you there as we're closing. Uh, Lord Jesus, we love you. We, we celebrate your goodness. We thank you that you are available to us. You want to be in a relationship. That it is That prayer is a two-way conversation. There's so many ways, God, that you speak to us. We want to speak to you. So, Lord, grow our prayer life. Grow our passion for prayer. And grow our ability to respond as you, God, speak to us. And God, through the power of your Holy Spirit at work in our lives, will you teach us how to pray? Yeah. Uh, we need help. Um, we need um, self-control. We need um, just uh, your help, even as so many of us believe in prayer and we want to pray, but we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in humility, uh, we're crying out to you and asking for your help in this endeavor to mm -hmm. grow as people who pray passionately. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God, that we can even ask you to help us to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Sherry and Kevin, thank you so oh, much. I got to tell Kate. you that I've got, a, I think, three points that I'm taking with me that I'm going to go and I'm inspired Thanks. to do a couple of different things as I move from here. So I know Great. that our audience will be the same way. Thank Thanks, you. Keith. Great to be with you. Thanks. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear more. We'll see you next time. Okay.